But he, so before we talk about, you know, using the lag for practical purposes, like time between orders, um, you may need to sometimes compute a moving average. Um, I personally use business intelligence tools like Tableau or, or Pandas, Matplotlib. But, you know, sometimes you may just want to compute the moving average, throw it into Excel and send it out over email. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. So I put together a quick example of, of how you would do that. Um, I, I, I took the same sales data that we were using before and I wrapped it in again, a common table expression using width. And I, I found this example, it, it works pretty well. Um, so it's the same idea. It's kind of like instead of row number or lag, you're taking an average of uh, the sales this year. And I converted it to a numeric because money does not have an average operator in Postgres. So I just converted it back to numeric, like it was up here before I converted it to money. And over, um, you're gonna order by date. And here's where the magic happens. Um, you're gonna be rows between seven preceding and zero following. So this is an idea of a, of a moving average um, looking back. Uh, some people like a rolling average, so three prior, three forward. Um, really, it doesn't matter in my opinion. It, it all depends on, on the use case, um, what you expect the day-to-day -day volatility to be like, what better represents the inherent uh, kind of cyclicality of the data, whether it's a, a weekday, weekend, day split. Uh, or something else entirely. It really depends on the random variable or the process you're modeling. But um, I'm just running it here, and I wanted you to see that this column, uh, L7 day average, since it has no prior rows here, it's just that row. But let's actually you know, put some data into Excel here and just verify that it's actually working. Um, when you copy and paste, it'll uh, use a delimiter of, of a semicolon. <clears throat> so you can just uh, clean that up there. And let me zoom in just a little bit. So, you know, we would expect this, um, this moving average column. Let me just move it down here so we can label it date, sales, uh, lagging seven day MA. And, you know, if we, what are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven equals average. We just take take that. Um, there we go. So literally, it, it just did that. It's just looking at the last seven rows, and it's taking the average. Um, really handy. Saves you some time. Uh, let me try to think of another thing we can do so this is not that short of a video. We could uh, could compute the difference between uh, sales this year. So I could just say something like, you know, um, let me make it a little easier. Uh, put a comma here. I'll take SD sales this year minus this uh, terrible thing as a uh, well, uh, this versus the average, I'll just call it that. Um, what am I getting here? Operator does not exist. Money minus numeric. A lot of times, if you just read the messages, they make sense. Um, so you can see here, for instance, today, if today was 1, 2, 15, and we did 36,000 in sales, uh, the average over the past seven days or whatever the available days are is uh, 55000 and we're off by about $18,000 versus the average. So you can kind of compute whatever differences you want using the columns. Just wanted to show you this handy trick rows between preceding and zero following. Again, you can change these to be whatever you want, and it's pretty straightforward. Next, we'll start looking at uh, some time differences between orders by customers. Thank you.